SpaceX's Starbase is hotter than ever. Far below along Boca Chica Boulevard, hundreds of people milled about. Some stared silently at the massive rocket being prepared for launch, others talked, snapped photos, or strolled toward the sand dunes. The mishmash of people also comes from across the United States, Belgium, Germany, Poland, Australia, Israel, France, and England, in hopes of seeing Starship fly in just the next few hours. And I'm sure you're also very excited, aren't you, pal, buddy, patron, eh? The launch originally scheduled for Friday morning was delayed at least 24 hours as SpaceX worked to replace the actuator for one of the booster's grid fins, which look like latticed metal slats, that help control the rocket as it returns to Earth. After repairing that part, workers restacked the Starship on top of the Super Heavy booster Friday morning. As of Friday night, as I'm recording this, things still appeared to be on track for today's morning launch during a 20-minute window beginning at 7 a.m. If something goes wrong, SpaceX has another launch window at the same time on Sunday. You heard that right. Today's launch attempt window will only be 20 minutes long, giving SpaceX not a lot of time to troubleshoot any problems that may arise. However, don't worry, SpaceX isn't new to short windows. The company launches its Falcon 9 rocket weekly with almost instantaneous launch windows. The difference this time is the Falcon 9 has launched over 80 times this year alone, while this will only be the second flight of SpaceX's Starship rocket. This will require SpaceX to have a rather flawless countdown, which is going to be more likely this time around than during the first launch back in April as teams have undergone numerous dress rehearsals in recent weeks. Yesterday, SpaceX announced on X that Starship and Super Heavy are ready at the launch pad in Starbase, Texas, targeting Saturday, November 18th for Starship's second integrated flight test. Elon Musk also said Starship launch on track for tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is a test and we're going to learn a lot either way, Lisa Watson Morgan, who manages NASA's Human Landing System program, said in an interview this week. We'd love to see it go off perfectly, but frankly, if it doesn't, it's still going to be a great learning event, and it still will give us progression on the schedule for the different flight tests, and then we'll know the areas we need to more deeply penetrate. We do anticipate the Raptor engines will perform better for this test, Watson Morgan Morgan said. The engines on the next Starship test flight are a mixture of first and second generation Raptors, whereas the first launch in April primarily used the older engine model. We're interested in the science that comes from that, and later on next year, we anticipate a propellant transfer demonstration between two Starships, Watson Morgan said. That's really when we start maturing the systems and when it really gets exciting for HLS, or Human Landing System, because those are the building blocks that we need and, frankly, it's never been done successfully in orbit. During a presentation at the November 17th meeting of the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee, Lakeisha Hawkins, the Assistant Deputy Associate Administrator in NASA's Moon to Mars Program Office, also shared that SpaceX will need to conduct Starship launches from both its existing pad in Texas and a newly constructed one at the Kennedy Space Center. This dual launch approach is necessary for sending a lander to the moon as part of the Artemis 3 mission. SpaceX's operational strategy for the Starship Lunar Lander, part of the Human Landing System program, involves a multi-launch approach utilizing the Starship slash Super Heavy system. Initially, a launch will deploy a propellant depot into orbit, followed by subsequent launches of tanker versions of the Starship. These tankers will transfer methane and liquid oxygen propellants to the depot. The final phase includes the launch of the lander version of Starship, which will rendezvous with the depot, refuel its tanks, and then proceed to the moon. The exact number of launches required has been a subject of debate since NASA selected Starship for the HLS award back in 2021. Neither NASA nor SpaceX has provided recent definitive numbers. A paper presented at the 2023 International Astronautical Congress by NASA outlined the use of a series of reusable tanker Starship variants for depot filling without specifying a precise quantity. It's in the high teens in the number of launches, Hawkins said, that's driven concerns about boil-off or loss of cryogenic liquid
with propellants at the depot, she suggested. In order to be able to meet the schedule that is required as well as managing boil off and so forth of the fuel, there's going to need to be a rapid succession of launches of fuel, she said. The proposed timeline necessitates launches from both the current Starship pad in Boca Chica, Texas, and the new one under construction at Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center. The latter is situated next to the current pad used for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. We should be able to launch from both of those sites, she said on a six-day rotation. Critics of NASA's selection of Starship for HLS have pointed to the number of launches as a weakness in the architecture. The Government Accountability Office, in its rejection of protests by Blue Origin and Dynetics of the Starship HLS Award in 2021, noted that SpaceX required 16 launches overall for a Starship lunar lander mission. Musk, chief executive of SpaceX, disagreed, calling the need for 16 launches extremely unlikely in an August 2021 social media post. He said a max of eight tanker launches should be needed to fuel the Starship lander, adding it could be as few as four. Development of the Starship lander has frequently been seen as on the critical path for the Artemis 3 mission, given that both the Space Launch System and the Orion spacecraft have both flown. However, earlier in the committee session, Jim Free, Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, argued that there are many more factors going into that mission. We have a whole bunch of new stuff that comes together for Artemis 3, he said, from new spacesuits being developed by Axiom Space to the addition of a docking port on Orion. Yes, the lander is absolutely important. We can't go anywhere without it, but we also can't go anywhere without the suits. His comments came a day before the scheduled launch of the second integrated Starship slash Super Heavy Vehicle, designated OFT-2, which stands for Orbital Flight Test 2, and is a key milestone in the development of the Starship vehicle, and thus for Artemis. I hope everybody across all of these programs is cheering that on, he said of the launch. We need OFT-2 to go. Meanwhile, Falcon 9 is also scheduled to lift off from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station tonight, during a four-hour window that opens at 11 p.m. EDT. If all goes according to plan, the Falcon 9's first stage will come back to Earth for a vertical landing about eight and a half minutes, eight and a half minutes after launch. On the drone ship, just read the instructions, which will be stationed in the Atlantic. The Falcon 9 is carrying 23 second generation version 2 mini satellites and will head on a southeasterly trajectory after launching from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral. Following stage separation, about two and a half minutes into to the flight, Booster 1069, which is making its 11th flight, will arc towards a landing on the drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which will be stationed about 420 miles or 675 kilometers downrange in the Atlantic east of the Bahamas. It'll be the 11th launch and landing for this rocket's first stage, according to a SpaceX mission description. It'll also be SpaceX's 54th Starlink delivery mission in 2023 and the company's 84th orbital launch of the year. If everything goes swimmingly, the satellites will be released into orbit an hour and five minutes after liftoff. SpaceX announced early this year that it had signed up over 2 million subscribers in more than 60 countries for its Starlink internet service. This launch is the first of two planned Starlink missions this weekend. SpaceX also aims to loft 22 of the broadband satellites from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base on Sunday, November 19th at 1.55 a.m. EDT. And there you have it, folks. That's it for today's episode for now, because we're expecting more news to follow. So stay tuned. In the meantime, if you'd like to support our channel even further, you can go on ahead and hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.